Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com. Yeah. You just not like people in general? No, not really. Never really have. I'm just kind of, you know, you know, the silly line about, you know, I'm not a racist. I hate everybody equally. Yeah, that that's pretty much always applies to me most of my life. <laughs> We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery, statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 132nd episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So this week, we have a slightly different show. This is going to be an impromptu conversation between Andre and I that you're going to hear because Dave, Dave never showed up. Dave's not here, man. Uh, we don't actually know what happened to Dave at the moment. Uh, at the time of the, this recording, it's 10 p.m. on Thursday. Dave just never showed up, never responded to our messages, kind of unlike him. Hope he's okay. But Andre and I were sitting around waiting and we started talking and, you know, half an hour into it, we just decided, hey, Dave's not here. We might as well just make this a podcast. So we just kept going. So that's what you're going to hear. I uh, hope you guys enjoy and catch you on the other side. Well, not that. I just recorded your vape hit. We don't want to hear that. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So I just, record, the vape, I, just, I just hit the recording now. We were just talking about the rising prices, some crazy prices of some cryptocurrencies, but... I mean, sure, does it seem odd that the opening of one exchange would create such a fuss in the steam market? Yes. However, have you seen what the fucking crazy fuckers in the Asian market have been doing to Ethereum because of their crazy cats and their digital oh, cats? Oh, yeah, the Ethereum cats? Yeah, the crypto kitties. Dude, yes, uh, a couple of people made posts about that. I read about them. Yeah, so like, you can throw off an entire blockchain <laughs> with digital kitties. I have a feeling you could do something could be done to the price of the markets with just one little change like that because it opens the door to so many more people that, you know. Yeah, that's true. And we do. And there is a very large Korean community on Steam. It like it, one of the there things that continually surprises me is the the groups of international people. I mean, we we have like a whole community of people specifically from Nigeria and Laos. Like they have their own discord server. They have their own community and everything. Same goes with Koreans and Japanese and even Chinese people. Uh, so I'm not surprised. I, I mean, I can't say I'm I can't say I'm necessarily surprised. I just didn't think it would have that much of an impact. Yeah, I'm sure there's some pumping going on. I I would oh. I would be very very I, I I would highly doubt that there's not any pumping pumping going on and this is all organic. But that being said, I think that this is going to push the price of Steam back dollars. At least over five dollars. Once it, we finally reach a, an equilibrium point, um, I don't think that. I, I mean, of course, I could be wrong because I didn't think that Steam it, or I didn't think that uh, Bitcoin was going to hit ten thousand dollars this year. But uh, Jesus, it's just an eight, it would finally hit eighteen on my ticker a little while ago. 
Yeah, it, and it and it eventually dropped back down to fifteen earlier today, but it's been steadily climbing the rest of today. So the drop the drop earlier today. Shit. The drop earlier today was only because of the Coinbase shit. What happened with Coinbase? I haven't. I've been Coinbase. Coinbase gets overloaded when whenever when the price spikes like this, the exchanges get oh, overloaded yeah, because it's garbage. Because yeah. it's a ton of it's a ton of people trying to. It all, it's all it's it's mostly noobs who are flooding the market going, holy crap, the price is still rising. I need to get in now. So they all flood the markets. The most recognizable name is still Coinbase. So most people, that's the only name they know if they know anything about crypto. So they go there, they go buy their Bitcoin. It drives the prices crazy for a while. And then it causes, it almost always, like it happened the other day when the first spike, to tw when, when it kept uh, flirting with 12 for, for like a day or two and then finally broke through. Same thing happened then. Market got flooded. Coinbase went down like twice in one day. And once that goes down, considering that's where the majority of the people still do their exchanging, despite how crappy it can be it just it yeah. it it it, ca it it causes a huge it'll cause those huge drops in price because nobody can actually make any transactions and i saw something although it was from one of the bitcoin gash of uh, a uh, gash yeah bitcoin gash there there you go the bitcoin gash evangelists who was screaming about uh, bitcoin's unconfirmed transactions were going to hit somewhere in the neighborhood of 233,000 today I don't think it ever got that high. I think the highest I saw was 170 before it's finally started to correct itself again a little bit. But uh, well, I mean, isn't Ethereum backed up too? I heard Ethereum was backed up by like tens of thousands of transactions. Well, Ethereum is backed up. Business. Yeah, Ethereum is backed up because of the aforementioned uh, crypto kitties. But that's a whole separate issue. That's not with people buying. Yeah, I got you. In and out, and I mean, I I got out of Ethereum a while ago. I I was hearing too many like negative reports and just too many people that I trust their opinion on who are just bashing the shit out of it. And uh, I was just like, all right, I'm just gonna dump it. <laughs> so I I got out of the Ethereum game. Where the hell is Dave? I don't know. I, I really don't know. We didn't even have anything planned tonight. I want to get my mining rig back running again, so <laughs> I don't want to take too long. Finally got the stupid thing stable. Did you? Although, yeah, although I started messing around with it again just before the show, so who knows what's going to happen now. But um, Oh, it's, it's like me and cars, man. A car will be running fine. I'm like, yeah, let me just tweak a couple of things. Suddenly it runs like shit. Fuck. Yeah. Every fucking time. Every time I've had a classic car, I've done the same thing. It'll yeah. be running just fine. Be working great. Uh, well, maybe I can get it to run a little bit leaner, save myself a little bit of fuel. Yeah. Oh, maybe I should tweak with the timing a little bit. Yeah. Hey, well, because every time, as as of the recording last week, I, it had been up for like six or seven hours, and it, it, you know, I told you guys it had crashed right before the show. So, like six, I think seven hours was still my my max at that point. And then after after the show, I went back to work and was fiddling around most of the weekend, and then started started over one more time and this time like did like nothing to it just did like the bare bones stuff that i could find and i managed to get it stable for the most part except my power consumption was a lot higher than i wanted it to be and my hash rates were lower than what i thought they were going to be too but I left it up because I was like, all right, I just I have to make sure I at least have this thing stable first and then I can tweak again. So I left it running and it went, I think, 40 plus hours without a hitch. So I'm like, all right, I finally fit because like I was actually shortly after the show last week, it might have been the next day or something. I was like I was in the process of getting ready to return one of the cards because I convinced myself that it was defective because that was the one kept, that kept crashing. And then I went to go return it only to find out that obviously these cards are not in stock currently because everybody and their mother is trying to buy them. So Amazon was only too it was only too happy to offer to refund my money immediately but because they didn't have any other cards in stock, that's all they would do, which was great if I wanted my money back, but I couldn't get another card because the price had already shot up 200 more dollars. So, well, that's, <laughs> so I was nice. like, I was like flipping out. I was running on three cards for a couple of days. Then I just decided to try it once more. And that's when I got everything working. And I just figured out that one of the cards just can't handle the higher um, memory frequency that the other ones can. And once I, clock that down all of a sudden everything was stable and i was like whoo 
wait a minute, that's all I had to do from the beginning? I'm like, God damn it. I could have had this up and running the first time if I had just realized that the memory uh, clock needed to be turned down a little bit. And if I had done that, then I, I would have I would have had another extra week of mining and the difficulty already cranked up again two days ago as it is. So it's like I've already lost power, essentially, even though I finally got my, you know, as of right before the show, I had tweaked everything back to where I got to the hash, you know, hash rates that I was expecting um, and the power power output that I was expecting. And it was running smoothly. So I'm like, all right, this is, you know, all I got to do is turn it back on later and it should be fine. And as long as as long as I can get it to run again for 24 hours like that, then I'll put then I'll. Uh, add all the automation stuff because there are people have written scripts to be able to automate this whole thing so uh in case of a power outage it'll just turn itself back on run through the steps it has to run through and then start the miner for you i got you but yeah it's it's been a it's been an interesting experience i could definitely say i've learned a lot i've been frustrated i've definitely lost out on monero that i could have mined already but you know whatever it's a learning process well, uh, if it's any consolation, the same thing happened with my witness node a few days ago, and that went down. Um, I recently switched from a, a virtual server to a dedicated server, and you wouldn't think that the uh, system configuration files for you know like memory allocation would change between one or the other, but I mean, obviously that's set by whatever the defaults are on the particular server. The thing about the virtual server is it's set to however the person hosting it sets it to, whereas a dedicated server is you know it's set out of the box. Um, and I didn't think anything of it. And I, I had recently switched to a uh, higher memory uh, server because I needed the extra RAM because right now running the uh, Steam blockchain takes up 16 gigs or more. And I had previously had a 16 gig machine, so I upgraded to a 32 gig machine. Yeah. And it was running fine. It had been up for, oh, it had been up for a while. And then it, it uh, stopped and I started missing blocks. And somebody let me know. I was like, oh, well, holy shit, what the fuck's going on here? So I went through, I replayed it a couple of times and tried to figure out what was going on. Same shit kept happening. And then, you know, on my second replay, um, it actually crashed when it loaded 99% of the blockchain. I was like, oh, that's fucking weird. And it didn't, it didn't throw an error message. It just stopped the it just stopped the, the blockchain container. So it was just not doing anything. And then I finally replayed another, uh, you know, a fourth time or a third time. And it said, you know, bus, uh, bus error core dump. I was like, huh. So I got with uh, some of the other witnesses on uh, Steam and chat, and they were like, yeah, that means you run out of memory. I'm like, what? How is that I, possible? I just upgraded. Really? <laughs> I know. And that's what I was saying. I was like, that doesn't make any damn sense. So I rechecked. So Because the, the way that I run it is I run it through a program called Docker, which basically uh, is kind of like a, a script system to automate your uh, witness setup. Mm -hmm. And so... Docker has a couple of functions set into it, and you can actually set the uh, the memory allocation for the witness node. And it's supposed to set, it's supposed to provide the setting to the system configuration file, but for whatever reason, it didn't do that uh, the last time I ran it. So it was, I went back through, tried it again, did a clean install, replayed it, still did the same thing. And I was like, okay, I, no, I still don't know what's going on. I've done everything that I know how to do. So do you guys have any ideas? And so that's when they, that's when uh, one of the guys there, Dracos, who's like the pretty much the go to guy, the guy's a machine. Um, he was like, Well, uh, have you checked the uh, FS tab settings, the file system configuration settings? I'm like, no, I haven't. Let me have a look. So I loaded it, I, you know, I opened it up in uh, Nano and I looked through it and I was like, Huh, okay. So yeah, it is telling the computer that I only have 16 gigs of space, not 30 gigs. I don't know why it is, but it is. So I added in another line to allocate like the whole 30 gigabytes of RAM for the uh, Steam blockchain. Uh, restarted the server, got everything up and running, and it's now been running fine. Haven't had an issue. And I just recently, thanks to the uh, enormous price spike in SPD, I had uh, 27 Steam back dollars, and I managed to purchase a $70 server with a $20 one-time setup fee uh for half of that nice so 27 steam bag dollars got me a 90 dollar server setup and i still had half of that amount left over to pay for my uh, to pay for my renewal for my my original 32 gigabyte server nice so I'm, I'm sitting pretty i'm rocking and rolling nice 
Yes. Considering I make like $2 a post on average, uh, if I make like three posts a day or hell, even if I just make one post a day every day, yeah, I'll be uh, rocking and rolling. I'll be able to support myself no problem. Yeah, maybe I should have gotten into the whole Steam thing. I just, Steam it rather. I just never did. I mean, it's like I've told everybody else that run, that posts anything on Facebook. Just copy and paste the shit. I mean, it's it's too it is too easy to expand your audience to that platform as well, without having to input significantly more effort to do it. Oh you no, know I, mean? I, I I get that. I just I my my content has been dwindling and dwindling and dwindling over the course of the past year or so. Like all I do anymore are shows. I I you know these days I like make a, a meme or two a month. I barely write anything out anymore. I'm just like, yeah, I've been so wrapped up with everything else. I just don't feel like doing it. Well, if it's any consolation, I don't really put out. Con- I haven't really put out much content over the last six months either. I'll go a week and I'll make like, I'll make like my obligatory um, show posts and that's it. So yeah, but well, especially for the past you know three months, you've had a very legitimate excuse. <laughs> Four months, I have not. <laughs> I just, I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't want to do it. And yeah, but I mean, to be fair though, the amount of stress that you're under with everything that's going, that's been going on. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a pretty legitimate excuse. Stress tends to kill motivation pretty good. Yeah, that's why I'm. I was gonna say that's why I'm surprised that I actually found the motivation to try to get into this whole mining thing. But that actually, as, as soon as I started to say it, it, it clicked in my head why it's different because that makes sense because. Anything I could do to put myself in or continue my hermit mode, I'll usually welcome, which memeing kind of should be because I'm doing it by myself, but I I have to venture into the quote unquote world to get ideas. You know, with the mining, I could do it here by myself for the most part and only venture into a very small corner of the world with very specific terms I was searching for. And it would kick back results for very specific things I was looking for rather than just looking for looking at everything and trying to go, oh, okay, what can I make a meme out of or what can I write about? You know, so I guess, yeah, that uh, so, yeah, I guess that's why I did the mining thing, because I could kind of do it by myself, you know, with only contact with a couple of people here and there. So, yeah, you just not like people in general. No, not really. Never really have. I'm just kind of, you know, you know, the silly line about, you know, I'm not a racist. I hate everybody equally. Yeah, that that's pretty much always applies to me most of my life. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if if I become friends with a person, I usually genu- genuinely care about them. But overall, just people in general, I just can't stand. <laughs> Well, yeah, I can't say I blame you. People are kind of shit most of the time anyway. Yeah. It's uh it's it's a pretty mixed bag. But uh I don't know. I I don't think I could do it. I I I have done it that way kind of. I mean, I've been doing that for like the last, fuck the last 4 4 months pretty much. But uh I don't know. I I kind of I enjoy social interaction even if it is to a, a sort of limited degree too much to kind of say, "No, nah, I'm not interested in it." Well, I like social interaction, to yeah, to a point, I guess. I mean, it, it depends. I mean, you know, it's totally setting specific for me, I guess, because you know, like when I go when I go off to Michigan for a few days for the past couple of years, like that's some of the best time I've had probably ever, you know. <laughs> and I I would like that to continue. So like those type of social interactions, that's great because like. That's that's my perf- perfect world because I'm removed enough from society that I don't have to deal with people other than ones that I genuinely like and care about <laughs> for extended periods of time. I still have my solitude if I need it. I could just go to my tent for a little while and just chill and hang out and just, you know, or go for a walk and be by myself. But I'm still close enough to civilization where I can still get Wi-Fi. So if I want to look something up, I can, <laughs> you know. Like, I don't go out. I, I mean, I can't even remember the last time I went to a bar and I, I would probably kill myself if I was dragged to one at this point because I, I never I never I never liked them before. They stopped allowing people to smoke in them, much less after it, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I've. Mm-mm. It's one of the things I can I can proudly say is down here in Alabama in a bar, you can still smoke. 
Yeah, yeah, they got rid of that. Still year. smoking a bar. And there goes the price drop on SBD. It was up to $14. It's now down to 12 So mm-hmm. I think it's starting to starting to hit that uh, that peak where it's going to waver a little bit. I hope. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, uh, it's just hitting a downslope, and then it's going to shoot up to like $17 and then kind of taper back down to like 16 something and then shoot back up to 20 and then... By the end of the year, it's going to be 50 fucking dollars. <laughs> Who the fuck knows? Hey, man. That's what I'm counting on with some of my other... I mean, obviously, you're obtaining those in a much different way than I am. But, you know, that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for with some of these smaller, like, altcoins that I've been getting lately. Of course, you know, I made it, I, I made a calculated mistake earlier trying to pick up more vert coin because all the, all the alts were on their way down. With this whole, you know, with Bitcoin rising, pretty much everything else is dropping at, at the same time. Yeah, but except except Litecoin, Litecoin, Litecoin's still holding pretty steady around a hundred dollars. Like it dropped almost to ninety this morning and then climbed back up again, and it's been hovering between ninety five and a hundred. But everything else has been dropping. So when Vert started dropping again, I'm like, oh, here's my opportunity to pick up those other twenty, you know, at least twenty five more that I wanted to do the first time around, and I just didn't pull the trigger, and then I was mad at myself because the price shot up afterwards. Because Vert hit almost hit ten yesterday, I think. Um, no, nice from a week ago at four when I bought in, and uh, so the price started coming down again, and it dropped below eight, and I was like, eh, I'm not gonna, you know what? I'm gonna wait. It may drop even further. And then it shot up all the way over nine again. I'm like, God damn it. I missed a window. And then it dropped again. And, yeah. I, and then it dropped again. Uh-oh. I'm like, all right, I'm not missing it this time. I'm going to, I'm going to get some when it drops below eight. Cause then that way, you know, now I've, now I've essentially paid six for all of mine. Cause I paid four for the first batch, eight for the second batch, you know? So I essentially spent six bucks, you know, per coin. Um, so that's still good. Right. That's still a, you know, still a good bottom that I'd like to get in on. That's great. Of course, now, ever since I did that, then the price went back up a little bit, and then I was continued to drop, and is now back in like the six seventy five range. Oh my god, damn it! <laughs> I, o- <laughs> I, o- I always you know, no okay. I always okay. Was the, look, consider consider this though. Okay, I had a hundred SPD last night, right? And I bought it at it's two forty. It's two forty, right? And so the price jumped up to what was it? I think I, what did it? I cashed out. I I sold that out at like six seventy five, right? Uh huh. And I was thinking, okay, well, you know, it's it'll it'll bump up to nine, but it'll drop back down to six, and we'll probably reach an equilibrium at five. So I think I've I've done pretty decent for myself. I doubled what I you know what I bought in at. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I come look at it today, and it's uh. like hit. Nine dollars, ten dollars, twelve dollars, sixteen dollars. Fuck, <laughs> son of a bitch, yeah. son of a bitch. Yeah, and it's, it's it's not it's not a lot of money either that I'm dealing with here. You know, for that, you know, I'm talking about you know like same thing as you about two hundred fifty bucks somewhere in that neighborhood. But it's just like it just but it, but still, it's just like it irks the shit out of you. Yeah, like, oh, come on, if only I, if only I had held it, I was in a position because it conti- it continues my bad track record with stuff like this. You know, overall, it doesn't matter to me because my whole intention with getting vert was to ho- to hodl them anyway, because I'm I'm convinced enough that it's going to be one of the next ones to finally take off. So, but yeah, but even so, it's like, well, you know, if only I had, still, I could have made, I could have had that much more of a margin. Well, yeah, because I would have had, I would, I would have had, I would have, I would have been able to hold on to just that much more Litecoin because that's what I did. I exchanged it for Litecoin. Because I was, I'm tempted to do it with, I was so tempted to do it with Bitcoin. And I'm like, number one, I got to pay the transaction fees. Number two, yeah, the price is going crazy right now. But if it drops and then I, you know, and then I'm just, and then, and then it, or no, and then it, you know, and then it finally settles, but then the climb goes up again and the climb goes even higher this time. And I've lost just that much Bitcoin. I'm just going to be sad about it because I won't buy, I won't be able to buy anymore, you know, whatever whatever no i'll tell you i'll tell you what makes me sad i had at one point half a bitcoin i had 0.5 bitcoin 0.53 something or other and that was when it was two something it was 2000 something um and i was like okay cool you know i bought in at like 17 i've made a you know i made a few hundred bucks cool you know way to go i'm gonna pull this out i'm gonna start paying down my credit cards you know rock and roll good to go and that was earlier this year. Yeah, earlier this year. 
Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hindsight's a bitch. I could have made eight times what I put in. Yeah. Fuck. Ah. And that was it. And that's, that's, I mean, for me, that's like, I mean, I'm in a, I think I'm in a better position than most when it comes to my crypto because I got in. So or I got in earlier than a lot of people who are going through all this now. Um, you know, it's only been a couple of years, but it's when the price was down at 250. <laughs> and uh, I think the most. Yeah, and that's, and you know what? That ki- that's what chaps my ass the worst because I knew about Bitcoin, you know, three years ago. Oh, I knew, I knew about I it really even think longer anything than that. of it, you know? I knew about it even, I knew about it even. Dave had been bugging me for over a year at that point at least a year at that point to get into Bitcoin. And I had kept ignoring him and it had already gone through that initial uh, $1,000 barrier. You know, whatever that was at the first time it hit, what was that? 2013 or something. Yeah. Like that. yeah, I remember that. Um, I remember and then drop back. So it already, it had already gone through that and it had come back down again, but I just kept saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And I kept blowing them off. And then I don't know what it was that I was finally, that I finally listened to him a couple of years ago. And it just so happened when I finally just made the decision that I was going to, you know, do it and buy some was when I went and looked and the prices had been dropping, dropping, dropping. And I think, I think the bottom of that, that must have been almost two years ago now, maybe three. No, maybe almost two years. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been that long. And I think it, I think it got down to like one seventy, but I, but that was at night while I was sleeping, and I missed that dip. So I was kind of pissed off at myself the next morning when I woke up when it would cl- when it was climbing back towards two fifty again. But I was like, screw it, and I bought in. And then I, I don't think I ever paid. I think the most I paid for one was twelve hundred, but that was only once. Everything else was either two fifty or I think there was like one or two at six hundred. But yeah, like all total, I think I, yeah, because all total, I only spent like 2,500. I think I put in 2,500 bucks originally, which I have actually already gotten out because I sold three quarters of one when it was, when it was around 2000, right around the time that you cashed out um, because I was hurting for money and I was desperate and I was like, screw it. I got to sell some of the Bitcoin. So I sold a cut, you know, I sold, sold some pieces off basically three quarters worth got like 16, 17 hundred dollars or whatever it was at the time. And then between other things I've bought and then I, and then I sold one other time cause I needed, I needed like a couple hundred bucks. So between what I've sold, what I sold back and got actually, you know, got the cash back in my hand for, and what I've bought because I've paid for both Michigan peace and Liberty fest, uh, Midos peace and Liberty fest is the past two years for me and my family. I bought stuff at, the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest both years. I bought stuff at Pork Fest with Bitcoin, a whole bunch of shit. Uh, and then all the don- the donations I made and there may or may not have been a purchase online of some substance that I cannot get here as easily. Uh, <laughs> so with that, all, with that all told, I've definitely made back what I paid in, what I put in. So, you know, like, like I said, I, I know I'm in a better position than most because I'm technically playing with all free money, you know, because when people are always like, oh, if it collapses, you have nothing. I'm just like, well, yeah, that's true. However, I will, I will be one of the lucky few that hasn't actually lost anything if that happens. You know, everything I have. Which speaking, which speaking of which, speaking of which, I need to pull some out because I bought, uh, let's see, I bought $600 on credit on my card because I had $600. I was like, look, it's nine grand right now. I need to get in on this shit because it's going to keep going up. I already know this is going to happen. I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing that song and dance. We're like, oh well, I'll, I'll wait until it drops back down to seven, and then I'll buy in then. Oh, well, so I've that's- done that like five fucking times, and it never fucking happens. So I'm just gonna, you know, whatever, buying it now. Fuck it. So at this point now, I have enough to take all of, take the total amount that I spent on credit out, put it back in my credit card, and still have more than I started with, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say, right? If you if you if you pull at least pulled out what you you know what you, your initial investment back, you'll get that back, and then you'll still have some. You know, that'd be good. I mean, it's it's so crazy that I that I just just on a lark, I went to go look at one of my old wallets the other day because I I was pretty sure that I had left some dust in there that you know I couldn't get out because you know it was below the threshold. Right. And whatever, like whenever I was making the last transaction, you know, the price changed mid transaction. So you get left left over that crap. I went and checked because I remember it saying like, you know, 
seventy five. Yeah, you, cents you, worth you of, mentioned this on the show. Yeah, seventy five cents. Worth of, yeah, I went into today. It was up to like five dollars. It was like seventy. <laughs> it was like seventy five nice. cents of Bitcoin when I left it in there. It's like now five bucks. So it's it's technically enough to pull out, but the fees are still way too high that I would lose most of it anyway. <laughs> So my only hope for that wallet is if I ever drop, I would have to, I would have to transfer more in, um, which of course I would lose a transfer fee there and then transfer it back out. So I'd get, you know, two transfer fees, which is just two mining fees, which is just ridiculous. Or I have to, I have to hope that the the speculations about it shooting up to like 30 or 50 grand, 50 grand aren't wrong. And at that point, it'll probably be worth like 10 or 20 bucks and then I can actually take it out. <laughs> That's the other thing I'm kind of curious about is like, what does this actually mean? You know, like, because obviously a lot of it is speculation, but, uh, you know, where where is this headed? Well, it's so hard to tell, man. I mean, the the price. Yeah, I, I don't have I don't have a mind for this. I don't have any kind of intuition for this the at all. Price, this is like yeah, I'm, I'm way intu- outside my wheelhouse. I, I'm learning as I go, but intuition. No, I still don't have that. But so but like, you know, from what I can gather, you know the the spike the, the this this current spike. I mean, this spike has been insane. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think if I think if I look back at the charts, I think there may have actually been bigger spikes at lower prices, but like there were wild vol- you know, The volatility was wild like this, but just this increase where you know it was flirting at the door of ten thousand for so long, and so many people were just saying, "Come on, just go get over 10. And since then, it has just you know it's gone almost double that, almost double that in like what eight days, maybe. It's been insane. Not even. It's been like it's been less than a week since it hit ten. Okay, yeah, so six, maybe maybe six days since it hit ten. It's been insane, and it's just it's continued to go up. So like, of course, you know, a lot of it is obviously driven by the you know the aforementioned noobs we were talking about. You know, everybody buying in. You know, the the FOMO the FOMO buyers um, who are yeah. all flocking in right now. I'm sure some of this has to do with the the announcement about about the Bitcoin about the approval for the Bitcoin futures to be traded. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. See, I wasn't aware of that, but yeah, I, that's got to have an enormous, well, what enormous I've, market impact. What, see, now I've heard a couple of different opinions on this, and again, I you know, there's a bunch of people I go to to just either ask questions of or just read their stuff and follow them because they haven't steered me wrong yet, like that type of stuff. Um, and I've been getting different opinions on that. Like a couple of people have said, yeah, of course, this is going to drive it up. And a couple of other people I've talked, you know, listen, either talked to or listened to, have said, said no, it's you know, they're not actually, you know. What they're going to be doing with futures is not really dependent upon, you know, what coins are actually in the market at that time. It's it's actually it's separate. It's you know it's a separate thing from that, so it shouldn't actually drive the price. But I think at least now initially it might drive the price, just because of the initial. Well, yeah, that's buzz. what I'm saying. Futures, futures, yeah, futures don't actually impact the price of whatever asset that you're purchasing futures on. However, the fact that futures are now available for Bitcoin. Um, I think is going to have an enormous impact on the market yeah, just to begin with. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. okay. So yeah, I, I I agree with that. That's that's what it's. So yeah, I think though, I mean, those two alone seem like they would be enough to drive this. Um, you know, uh, I mean the the only other the the only other normal answer would be this is the long term pump and dump that are, that all the naysayers have been claiming was going to come this whole time, you know, which I think is the least likely of those. Scenarios. It's the bubble. It's the bubble. Tulip mania is finally coming to an end, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, I, which, and it's funny, you know, it's funny you case. mentioned that because even my dad mentioned tulip mania. So many people I was like, mentioning it lately. Good Lord. And you know, the, the, the funny thing about it is I'm pretty sure that a majority of the people who are spouting that the naysayers out there, the real hardcore detractors that are out there throwing the tulip mania stuff around, most of them, I mean, I'm not saying your dad's one of them, but most of them probably had to go look up what tulip mania was in the first place. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Without a doubt, they probably don't know. The I mean, number story. one, it's an obs- it's an obscure economic reference. It really is. Yeah, well, yeah. see, I was going to say, is, so, it, is it? Yeah, but is it is it something that like you know, is it just like economists to know about it, or is it just like I know about it because like the Austrians talk about it, like it comes up in those conversations? Like I don't know. I don't even th- I don't even think it's it's particularly well known among economists in general, just because it's not. I mean, it's it's one of those ones where like yeah, it's a historical example you can point to, but like. Most of the time, like up until Bitcoin's 
meteoric rise now recently, there really hasn't been much of a reason to discuss it. I mean, yeah, I mean, you could make the comparison with the uh, housing market in 2005 to 2008, but even then it wasn't really that big of an issue. Uh, I think the, I think the, the, the people that were following uh, Greenspan when he was talking about irrational exuberance in the tech market, I think it probably would have come up in conversation then. But like I said, it's just it's a it's a kind of historical fluke that you can sort of point to and like, oh hey, look, this totally happened before. Yeah. But considering it's a it's a monet it's a monetary thing, right? It's a currency thing. So unless we're discussing currency and how many how many economists actually talk about monetary policy, like specifically monetary policy, and are well versed in monetary policy. I'm willing to wager not as many as sh- as there should be. Yeah, just because I was actually just trying to think back, and now I can't remember a time when I didn't know about tulip mania, but I know I learned about it through. Actually, it was some I don't remember which Austrian economist, but one of them was talking about it at one point years ago when I first started looking into all this stuff, and I heard it there. And I think I also heard about it on a history podcast, one of the history podcasts I listened to, probably Dan Carlin. But now it's just been stuck in my head ever since. Like I actually went and researched it, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Now I understand what people are talking about. Um, but I have, you know, you're right. You don't really see it out there a lot until now. Now all of a sudden, it's become a very popular thing. But I, I think it's funny because I'm pretty sure most of those people were not aware of it beforehand. No, no. I mean, to to put it another way, the only time a Keynesian would have any any particular interest in finding out about this phenomena is when they're challenged by an Austrian. Um, about the issue of unbacked currency. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> good point. I, I think that's the only time that they have any exposure to it at all. So, you know, yeah. but uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know where all this is going to go. I don't know what all this means. I, like I said, man, I, I don't either. I'm just riding the wave. You know, um, the higher it gets, at least Bitcoin in particular, the, high, the higher the price gets, the the itchier my trigger finger gets to. To, to pull out you know and finally be like all right this is enough but the greedy part of it's me it's never enough man lambos to the moon well this is a thing because the greedy part of me is like if the you know because again i i always have that thing in the back of my head like could i use that money right now absolutely you know my fa- like I'm, I'm i'm living on credit currently until i sell my house although that was kind of thought out in advance so it's not like i'm doing anything super crazy here uh but you know it's like yeah i could i could i could try to cash out now although it's not that easy to cash out that's the other thing you know everybody gets excited about these prices like oh i'm rich i have all this money it's like well uh kind of unless not, you, i it, mean it's not really accessible easily yeah and it's gonna cost you a shit ton to get it out it's like having it in an uh uh ira yeah, plenty of people, you know? plenty of people, plenty of people are hodling and, you know, there are some people that will continue to buy. I mean, there's, you know, the the smarter people are most likely not buying right now. <laughs> but uh I I mean, I know I know a couple of people in particular that every time the price starts dropping by a couple like after it steady after it stabilizes for like a, you know, a week or so and then the price drop takes a $2,000 dip. As soon as that happens, they're out there going, hey, anybody who wants to sell, uh, PM me, contact me, you know, instead of basically instead of going to the ch- exchanges. So I know there's people out there that'll still buy on pretty much every dip, you know, d- despite how high and crazy these prices, you know, even smart people who know better, <laughs> who know that when it gets this high, that's something, you know, that it can't, it can't hold on for that long. It just can't. It, it's we're not ready <laughs> the world is not ready for twenty thousand dollars a new plateau man yeah it's i mean i i, I still think the original you know as people were talking about a couple of months ago that the more stable price being around five or six thousand is still more accurate you know uh i mean maybe now bump it up to like eight but still this is like you know it's, it's this territory where it's kind of like again like for people like me i'm kind of like do I try to cash out now despite or at least cash out some of it despite the effort it's going to take me to do so and the extra steps I may have to take, you know, because I, and, you know, on the other hand, if I wasn't going to cash out, if I was just going to diversify more, which is actually what I would prefer to do, 
because the higher the price of Bitcoin gets, there is that giddy part of me that I'm like, ooh, yay. And the I can buy so many more coins now. Yeah. The other part of me is yeah. like, oh, this is this is this is not gonna end well. This is not gonna end well. This is not gonna end well. I would much rather just cash out some now and 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 diversify further. But the one thing I want to diversify into is really difficult for me to purchase because both Poloniex, I always say it wrong. How do you say it? Polo I call it Poloniex. Polo. Polo. Fuck yeah. it. Poloniex. Yeah, that's how it is. I, but for some reason, it always comes out of my mouth wrong. Poloniex. Poloniex and Shapeshift are both banned in the state of New York. Well, if it makes you feel any better, the only exchange I can use to purchase Bitcoin is Coinbase because nobody else supports the state of Alabama. Well, that sucks too. Uh, you know, again, that's a problem I don't have to deal with because I'm not purchasing any Bitcoin. I don't want to purchase any Bitcoin. I would love to buy. Well, I don't want to purchase because I don't have I don't have any actual you know I don't have any FRNs to turn into more <laughs> coins. I don't have any point. funds to do it with. But I, yes. uh, I would you know I would be more than willing to, especially right now. I mean, if it hits twenty, I would definitely if 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 I, if I had an easy method of doing it, I would probably totally pull the trigger if it hits twenty and dump maybe a whole coin into Monero. <laughs> And just say screw it, uh, but you know, like I said, it's so it's so hard for me. And I think we, I think I might have talked about this with you guys on one of the shows at one point. I don't remember, but uh, I actually went and looked just to see what would happen. And you get like the red screen, the red danger screen that you can't get away from. It basically says that you know we're not a, we're not allowed to provide you service because the you know where you live has banned it. And uh, because what they claim is your unsafe, uh, or, or what they're gonna what they're gonna make you do is uh, unsafely share, you know, your personal information, which we don't, we're not gonna ask you to do, but they will. So we refuse to provide you service because they're gonna put you in, put you in that much danger. <laughs> like that shapeshifts message to the people that that can't that can't use their service, which I think is funny as all hell. But it's it's like it's horrible because it's like there's three places. New York, Washington, and North Korea. It's the only three places. Wow. Only New York, Washington, and North Korea. Yeah, and not D.C., the state of Washington. The state of Washington, the state of New York, and North Korea are the three places on the globe who have currently banned the use of the Shapeshift platform. Now, that is the hot. That is fucking incredible. Isn't it, though? It's fuck. It's ridiculous. And let it let it never be said that New York does not have something in common with North Poloniex, Korea. Poloniex, I get the same thing. I get the same type of warning. And... I'm just like, you've got to be shitting me, you know, now I could use, I could use my VPN, but shapeshift even makes mention of the fact on their site that if they're, if the, if, it, if they allow a transaction to go through and then they're later able to prove somehow that you were actually in one of these, you know, no, no, no shapeshift zones, they will actually pull your, they will actually pull the transaction and donate your money to a charity of their choice. Oh wow! Okay, so I'm They're like, about it. I'm like, uh, do I take that chance? <laughs> no, don't do, don't do it. No, do it. because even though, as I've said before, technically I'm playing with that free money, it's still I'm counting on being able to get at least most of it at some point. <laughs> So it's I can't really risk it. So it's just like that, that's why I went into the mining game. And I know so many people that are already like, oh, Monero is already now not worth mining because you're, uh, you know, because the difficulty went up again. And it's like, well, no, as long as you have, still have at least four of these fucking cards, it's still worth it. Not as worth it. You know, I'm down to three, co three coins a month now instead of four uh, that I can mine if I get it up running 24 seven. But like it's the only way I can really get them unless I have people willing to sell them to me right now. And nobody I know that has enough that would be willing to sell will sell at the price that I would prefer to buy at because <laughs> they're smarter than that. <laughs> True enough. So True I'm kind of like stuck until I leave until I leave here or unless I just drive out of state to go make the fucking purchase. You know, like to go to to either go to exchange or just go straight to the shapeshift site, which even though I know it'll cost me a little more in fees, that's probably the route I would I wanted to go. I just wanted to do that anyway. Like I didn't want to get onto the exchange anyway. Like so being shut out of Poloniex was a pain in the butt, but I was like, 
whatever. I didn't really want to go that route. I would much rather go to Shapeshift, pay the little extra, you know, pay the one percent extra fee or two percent, whatever it is, and uh, be able to just uh, automatically shift my stuff, you know, because it sucks. Because the Coinami wallet uses utilizes the Shapeshift feature. But because it's through their platform, it doesn't get flagged as me being in New York or whatever. But it also doesn't have XMR on their platform. <laughs> right. So it's like, God damn it. I just can't fucking win. I just want to buy some <laughs> fucking Monero. God damn it. I've been wanting to buy it. Since no. I've been wanting to. I, I've been. I finally decided I really wanted to. I was I was convinced enough that this was the right, the right route to take as far as uh my you know my secondary coin to bitcoin and possibly a, a split with bitcoin at one point you know like my 50 50 thing type of deal or 40 40 whatever because the rest would be in other alts obviously but like i made that decision way back when it was hovering around 120 125 and now it's a 250 and i still can't fucking get any <laughs> <laughs> and because of all the glitches and stuff and and figuring out the the right frequencies to set my goddamn graphic cards out and losing out on mining time and just lost hashing power because of the uh, difficulty increase. I think I've, I've only mined half a coin so far. I mean, I'm just off the original pace. Like it was supposed to take me, I was supposed to get a coin in 10 days. So I'm like 10 and a half days. It took me to get the half, you know, well, five and a quarter days, I guess it took me to get the uh, half a coin. So I'm still basically on that mark but again difficulty continues to rise and, <laughs> and i shut it down to do shows like this which we're not even doing although you and i are doing a show at this point um i'll probably just, yes i'll probably just have to uh stick a stick an intro in at the beginning and pretend like we planned on doing this well we didn't plan on doing this obviously if you've gotten this far you probably figured out that you ha we haven't been doing we haven't planned on doing this and uh, we have no idea where dave <laughs> is he never responded that's actually very unlike him to just not only just yeah. Not usually show Dave up. is pretty on the spot. If anybody's not going to respond, it's usually me, and that's usually because I happen to get sidetracked with something. Yeah, but he didn't say anything about not being here this week, did he? Last week, I don't recall him saying anything. Not as far as I recall, I don't recall him saying anything about that. Yeah. So, and I haven't. I don't think I've talked to him since then. Anyway, well, Dave, I, I hope you're okay. <laughs> yes. But yeah. So. Hopefully, uh, King Davius Rex is okay. <laughs> I don't know what we'd do without him. He's, yeah. the, back, he's the backbone of our foundation. Yeah, without him, we're lost. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we had a much more productive conversation that actually stayed, rel you know, stayed pretty much on point without his you know, ham-fisted ham uh, segues. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's although, right. Going although, off on conspiracy tangents. Although that does that does one hundred and thirty five percent break up the monotony. So I guess it's not the end of the world. But yeah, that's true. That's true. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, man. So it's uh, I don't I don't even remember where I was going before that. I was just saying you know I've, I don't know, but I'm oh, yeah. at my Bitrex wallet and SBD reads uh, 80, point two percent positive change, and I'm just like holy shit. Anyway, go on. I've been so many. I've been seeing so many bad things about Bitrex and Bit whatever and all this other stuff and uh, all these things that I knew people were using. I just keep I keep seeing more and more. Like it was so funny when I first started the mining thing. I kept coming across the uh, Nice Hash, which I didn't know what it was at the time. I, I learned about it. You know, apparently, I guess for anybody who doesn't know, you can mine pretty much anything or, or whatever they'll allow you to with Nice Hash, and then they'll convert it to Bitcoin and. Uh, instead, so you mine one thing and get Bitcoin in return, uh, which sounds like a sweet deal. Sounds almost too good to be true because it's so hard to mine Bitcoin. And I heard about it. I read about it. And then I read a bunch of negative things about it. People, people, people kept going, it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. Stay away. Stay away. Stay away. And uh, I just never decided to hook up with it. Like, it, actually, there was an option for that when I first uh, set up my miner to, uh, you know, to add, you know, to, to do it, the nice hash setup in there. And I was just like, nah, you know what? I'm just going to skip that. And I will go, you know, I'll do it on my own and I'll, I'll get the coins that I, you know, whatever I'm mining, that's what I'll take in. And uh, one of my other friends, one of my friends from actually around here who I hadn't spoken to in a while, but apparently is one of the few people who hasn't block you know unfriended and or blocked me <laughs> and never wants to speak to me again around here and he uh apparently just happened to get into mining too 
and he was all excited about it. And he kept telling me about nice hash, nice hash. And I'm like, you know, I've been hearing some really bad things about that, buddy. You may want to rethink that. He's like, no, 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 it's great. I've been, you know, I got this, this, you know, however much racked up in my Bitcoin wallet or, you know, Bitcoin already. It's been great. He's like, you know, a little bit more and I'll be able to cash out too. He's like, this is, you know, he's like, this is a great deal. And then sure enough, a couple of days later, I think it was just yesterday, Nice Hash had to announce that uh, apparently there was a hack and uh, their entire thing was stolen. $75 million worth of Bitcoin or something like that. $35 million. Worth oh, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was something like that. It was some ridiculously large amount. Yeah. So everybody who had their, who's been mining for however long and trading, you know, trading their things into bit hash, you know, to nice hash, uh, who hadn't, uh, you know, who hadn't, whatchamacallit, got those fees into their own wallets yet. Yeah, all gone. <laughs> all that mining for nothing. Well, not for nothing. Somebody's walking away with a lot. But, uh, you know. Yeah. Of, of course. A few million dollars. Yeah, but, but of course, in this situation, when stuff like this happens, it's always like even the articles written about it, the words hack and, uh, you know, stolen funds were in quotation marks because, uh, you know, usually when it when it goes down like this uh as we've seen unfortunately too many times in the crypto sphere it's because you know the dev team actually ran off with all the goddamn money <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah. know and it's and it's i mean it's the same story with bitconnect too and bitconnect's you know gotten the rap of being oh it's a pyramid scheme and there's there is a legitimate reason there's legitimate reasoning behind that right um, are you familiar with BitConnect at all? Have you heard about it? Well, you were telling us about it on one of the shows, I thought, weren't you? Because weren't yeah, you using it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I learned yeah. about it through I, that. I, I, basically, I, I went and looked into it, and then I found more negative reviews, and I'm just like, yeah, I'll just keep keep staying away. <laughs> I mean, really, all it is is you buy, you you trade your Bitcoin in for uh, BitConnect coin, and uh, they have a, a trading bot that trades. Bit, that makes Bitcoin trades and you earn a percentage of whatever it is that you have in there. Like they have a daily percentage return and you earn that on whatever you have invested in the platform and you're, you have to hold your, like they hold your investment for a period of time. Like you sh for a hundred dollars, it's like 299 days or whatever. And so, I mean, you, yeah, you can, you can make the case that it's a legit Ponzi scheme because there's no way you can get a 1% return every day for like the foreseeable future. But in fairness, they don't say that you're going to get a 1% return every day for the foreseeable future. So if it starts to become untenable, they could simply just not present a return on your investment at that point and be like, okay, well, this is how much we have and this is how much everybody's getting. So here you go. At that point, it would just be another wallet. So, you know, I, I like on the one hand, yeah, I can, I can see where the, the negative, the, the negative press comes from because it, it you can lay it out as a Ponzi scheme. But on the other hand, as long as, they continue to do what they do and as long as you know it if it ever ends up going down to zero nothing you know nothing has been lost really right uh i don't know but uh, the, you, you're gonna see you can see you can find negative stuff about just about every kind of scheme that's out there oh yeah no, negative of, press abounds there's negative shit about oh, literally of, everything of course it's just you know i guess when certain things because as, so, as soon as you said you know about the fact that they they hold on to it, you know, like, cause that, or, and if they just decided, you know, if they had to change it at some point, they would like that. Just as soon as you said that, I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. That's kind of the stories I was hearing with nice hash. Like they kind of just like all of a sudden people weren't getting their payouts and like, and they were people, a whole bunch of people are just like, what the hell? <laughs> and then like, you know, a couple of days well, later. Yeah. Like, but I, since I don't know a lot about nice hash, I don't know if there was, a, there was already a, uh, a, uh, a hold on the money that you put in to begin with. I don't think it you would have because it was a minor, right? Yeah, as far as you, I, you could pull, you, uh, it, is it you can pull out after a certain amount or I'm, I think after that, a certain period of time? I think that I know. I think it was. I think there was a minimum payout, uh, like most of the other miners. You know, like the pool. Like if you mine in, if you mine in any type of pool, uh, you know, like I'm mining in a Monero pool currently, and there's a minimum payout. Like you have to re you have to mine a certain amount before they'll actually let you before it actually get released into your wallet. You know, and you have to get that plus whatever to cover the fees. Um, you know, because I, I think the mining pool I'm in is like a okay, one, yeah, one okay, percent fee. Okay, I got you. 
so yeah, so I, 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 I never didn't look that far into it and I didn't try setting it up, but I assume that's how nice hashed worked because it works through a pool. And I think it's kind of a pool of its own, essentially, uh, of some sorts. So, but yeah, it's just when these things keep happening, it's just like, oh man, another one and another one. And so many people I know were, were using it. And, uh, like I said, I, I, like, you know, you mentioned earlier, it's, you know, of course there's a lot of hindsight involved in all this crap, but it's just like, as soon as I see this stuff happen, then it's like, all of a sudden I remember like reading back a couple of months ago when a couple of my friends were complaining about, you know, in this case, they were complaining about nice hash and it's like, oh, now everything like now looking backwards, it's like, you could totally see the path of everything happening, <laughs> you know, cause like the stuff with the, the disappearing funds and the, and the, all of a sudden no payouts. Uh, started happening a couple of months ago, from what I could figure out. From you know, yeah, and I mean, of course, from. you know, any any scheme that's out there, you're going to run the risk of, oh, okay, well, the devs are just going to allow you to to invest up to a certain amount, and they're just going to abscond with all this stuff. So, I mean, y you run that risk just about anything you do. Hell, you run that risk on any exchange that you have, any exchange you go to at any point in time, just be like, well, we're done, and this shit belongs to us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, it's just. It is what it is. The the exchanges, for the most part, though, I mean, because the you know there's so many people at the 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 people that are higher up in this game <laughs> that have made a lot 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 more than us off of this are also usually a lot lot smarter than us when it comes at least smarter than me when it comes to this. This stuff. is true. This uh, is at true. Least smarter than me, you know. And they, uh, you know, the exchanges at least seem to have to be, you know, I mean, sure, is there that potential? Absolutely, but they kind of like they they would lose out in the long run anyway you know like because uh you know i'm sure they they make a decent amount of money with all the all the tra you know the constant transfers they're doing anyway <laughs> you know yeah uh, and, uh, and of and course you don't want to you don't want to kill the goose that lays the golden egg right? well exactly so and the ones that are still around like i mean even though i guess poloniex is probably like the youngest one out of the, the major ones right that's hasn't hasn't been around that long from what i remember i know i only remember people talking about it more recently um as their go-to one is it poloniex i thought BitShares was the newest one it may not be the bit has been around for a while i, th I thought BitShares was around longer but again i i don't remember a lot of this stuff um, but it just seems to be like, you know, that's an, that's an area where it's l less likely to happen. You know, again, it's possible. Sure. But it's these, it, it's all these, it's all these ones that essentially pro it, what they, what they're essentially promising you is, you know, to make a fortune without having to do anything, whether they yeah, come, whether, yeah. whether they come out and say it or not, like that's what they're basically promising. And it's just so much easier for noobs especially to get sucked into these things that it just opens the door for so many more people to attempt these type of scams <laughs> and especially with the way the bitcoin prices have you know continued to go, go up especially in the past couple of years it's you can totally sit back and bide your time for a little while too you can play the long you can play the long con on it too <laughs> it doesn't have to be like a three-month thing and you're gone it could be like you know six months a year year and a half because you're still making money that whole time anyway if you're collecting even a little bit of bitcoin from these people and then immediately cashing that in you know you're making money all the whole time <laughs> so you don't oh, really yeah. care no of course so you could totally you know cash out i mean just uh to hold off on it yeah like i said i uh as, as tempted as i've been i've decided to stay away from most of that stuff and i still just won't get like can't i'm not gonna bring i can't bring myself to get into day trading because i know i was like you know i was talking about earlier with like the stupid little mistakes with just you know little mini little mini exchanges i want to make just because i want a different coin how off i've been with those i go to an exchange i'll probably get murdered you know <laughs> even if i'll i'll screw up the stop you know the stop losses or whatever and just like <laughs> yeah i'll lose everything yeah i tried day trading at one point and i was like yeah this is just not for me i'm I'm not good at this. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Well, on that note, I guess we can close out a show. On that note. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's we're right at an hour. There yeah, we there go. You, there you go. So there we go. Well, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. This was a slightly interesting episode, kind of an impromptu one since Dave never showed up. But anyway, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. 
All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Thanks to Paul Gordon. Uh, I've been busting his chops, and apparently there was just some miscommunication between he and I. The Amazon uh, banner is finally up on the page. He actually had tried to put it there a couple of weeks ago, and I guess I sent him the wrong the wrong code. Um, so that was uh, that was my fault. Uh, well, you know, he didn't check either, but. <laughs> Uh, both of us screwed up, but the Amazon link is finally up there. So please, please, please consider going to our site. Uh, even if you don't want to listen to the podcast, if you just want to click through there and do your Amazon shopping through our affiliate link, it would be greatly appreciated. It is always the easiest way to donate to us because you don't have to do anything other than clicking through that link. And heck, you only have to click, click through it once. Once you do, you can bookmark it and just go there from then on out. Then you don't even have to see our new cool looking site if you would rather not look at it you know it doesn't get much easier than that exactly exactly so please consider doing that and i have two new patreon episodes out this week i i know i kept saying that i was going to do one a week and then i got sidetracked for a couple of weeks but i put two out this week and i will attempt to put out two next week as well to try to make up for that so we'll be back on track again with the one a week um, so thank you again to our Patreon subscribers who continue donating to us and for everybody else, please consider going over there and donating. It's still set, I think at only a dollar a month and you can get access to all of the content, which there's now like 11 or 12 episodes up there and they're soon to be more. So, you know, please consider going over there and checking it out. Of course, if you want to donate more, we will not say no. And other than that, we will be back next week. Maybe with Dave. Who knows? We'll see what happened to him. And uh, thanks for listening. Catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. I feel like I should say screw somebody for Dave. Screw yeah, you, we're Peru. looking at you, Lithuania. There you go. Double dip. <laughs> Are you sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. The Central Scrutinizer is a Soviet-style leviathan trying to keep track of all you do. That's why I use a VPN or virtual private network from Bola VPN. Bola VPN is inexpensive, secure, and will allow you to use your computer without leaving a trail. Bola VPN is now also offering torrent seed boxes for safely sharing media with the world. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them from the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net.